For we are not saved by believing in our own salvation, nor by believing anything whatsoever about ourselves. We are saved by what we believe about the Son of God and His righteousness. The gospel believed saves, not the believing in our own faith. Horatius Bonner. This is The Bright Forever. Hello and welcome to The Bright Forever, where each week we rediscover the power and richness found in some of the greatest hymns of the faith. My name is Andy Peavy House, and I am your host and guide on this, our adventure through hymnody. It is always great to be back with you each week. We were off last week, and this week is exciting because of another amazing special guest. Returning for another episode almost exactly a year after his first appearance, my dad, Steve Peavy House. And we will be discussing an amazing hymn one with which many of you will be familiar, Blessed Assurance, by the amazingly prolific hymn writer, Fanny J. Crosby. Many of you know this podcast is actually named after another amazing Fanny Crosby hymn, The Bright Forever. To learn more about it and to hear how this podcast actually got started in the first place, you can go and check out episode one, of season one. Before we dive into this amazing hymn and hear from, in my opinion, one of the greatest and most amazing men in the world, let's explore the history of how this hymn became a song that has continued to help believers stand secure in their faith and proclaim the truth in its refrain. This is my story. This is my song. But before we begin, make sure to hit that follow button and click subscribe to never miss an episode. In the late 19th century, amidst a tumultuous era in American history, a woman named Fanny Crosby penned the timeless hymn, Blessed Assurance. Those of you who have been with us since the beginning, know a number of details from Fanny Crosby's life. But for those of you who are new to our podcast, Fanny Crosby was born in 1820 in New York. At six weeks old, little baby Fanny lost her sight due to a terrible medical error. However, despite her blindness, Fanny Crosby became a prolific hymn writer, composing over eight thousand hymns throughout her lifetime. One day in 1873, Fanny Crosby visited a dear friend, Phoebe Knapp, a talented musician and composer in her own right. Mrs. Knapp had recently composed a melody and was eager to share it with her friend Fanny. In Memories of 80 Years, her autobiography written in 1906, Mrs. Crosby recalls this meeting and how one of her most beloved hymns came into being. She says, In a successful song, words and music must harmonize, not only in number of syllables, but in subject matter, and especially accent. In nine cases out of ten, the success of a hymn depends directly upon these qualities. Thus, Melodies tell their own tale, and it is the purpose of the poet to interpret this musical story into language. Not infrequently, a composer asks, what does that melody say to you? And if it says nothing to you, the probability is that your words will not agree with the music when an attempt is made to join them. 
Blessed Assurance was written to a melody composed by my friend, Mrs. Joseph F. Knapp. She played it over once or twice on the piano and then asked me what it said to me. I replied, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. The hymn thus written seemed to express the experience to both Mrs. Knapp and myself. Later in the book, she recounts an interesting story about how Blessed Assurance had been used. She says, Blessed Assurance was written in 1873. The music was composed by Mrs. Joseph F. Knapp, who became known to me as early as 1863, and who has also written the notes to several hymns of mine, including Nearer the Cross and Open the Gates of the Temple. She continues and says, An English religious weekly gives the following account of how soldiers use God be with you and blessed assurance for passwords. When one member of the Soldiers Christian Association meets a comrade, he says 494, which is the number of the hymn God be with you till we meet again in sacred songs and solos. The latter replies six further on. That is hymn 500, which is the number of blessed assurance. Of this custom, the secretary of the association writes, these hymns are constantly being used by our members as greetings and response. And I do not think any member of the Soldiers Christian Association ever writes without putting them somewhere on the letter or envelope. Such a cool story. I'm, I'm thinking about starting that. I'm just going to start maybe greeting and responding to people with hymn numbers. <laughs> I don't know. It, it might work. It may not. A little different account exists in an earlier autobiography, Fanny Crosby's Life Story, written by a friend of hers, Will Carlton, in 1903. It wasn't in her own words, but it had been approved by her and was written in the first person. And it reads, Blessed Assurance was made in this manner. My dear friend, Mrs. Joseph F. Knapp, so well known as a writer and singer of most exquisite music, and as an aid and inspiration to all who know her, had composed the tune, and it seemed to me one of the sweetest I had heard for a long time. She asked me to write a hymn for it, and I felt, while bringing the words and tones together, that the air and the hymn were intended for each other. In the many hundred times that I have heard it sung, this opinion has been more and more confirmed. Whichever way you believe the hymn came about, there is no doubt that Fanny was moved by the melody's beauty. And she was inspired in that moment to compose what would become one of her most cherished hymns. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The hymn's words echoed its author's life and unwavering trust in God and her certainty of his presence 
despite her physical limitations. Fanny Crosby's hymn resonated deeply with audiences, capturing the essence of assurance and hope in what Christ had accomplished on the cross. It spread rapidly throughout churches across America and beyond, becoming a powerful anthem of faith for generations to come. Today, Blessed Assurance stands as a testimony to Fanny Crosby's enduring legacy as a hymn writer and her profound impact on Christian worship. Through her words and amazing melodies, she continues to inspire millions around the world to find peace and assurance in their simple faith. This is a hymn that my dad, Steve Peavy House, specifically asked to talk about. And I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Let's find out why he chose to talk about this hymn. Well, we are here with my father, Steve Peavy House, and we're going to be talking about uh, Blessed Assurance. And uh, I've had you on before, and so this is your second time on. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, and so we've, we've kind of talked to you about like hymns and your history with hymns, but before we start, is there anything in the past year since we've done this before, uh, that's kind of changed about hymns or for you that, uh, you have realized something new about hymns that you didn't realize before, or is there anything like that? Well, I think that th what I've, noticed, uh, and I really started thinking about it more uh, when you interviewed your mom, about uh, He Keeps Me Singing. And I thought about, uh, I know it sort of sounds like I've been watching too much Pollyanna, but <laughs> happy, happy hymns. Uh, there are happy <laughs> hymns. There are songs that just, you know, and of course, a lot of the, the Christmas carols are like that, and, and uh, he, keeps, he Keeps Me Singing, There's Within My Heart a Melody, and uh, Th there, there, there sings a melody. There rings a melody. I've forgotten how it goes. Um, <laughs> but it's a happy song. But, but so many of the hymns are um, even the ones that are not, uh, in terms of melodies and so on, happy sounding and everything. Uh, there's a deep joy that you find in so many of them. And this, this happens to be one that I think just rings with joy. It just. Uh, has so much power in, I mean, when you get to a chorus that says, this is my story, this is my song, <laughs> yeah. praising my Savior all the day long. I mean, just, you know, you sort of, you can just feel the, the ebullience. You can feel the, uh, the positive uh, joy to sort of rising up yeah. out of you as you're singing this song. I, one of the reasons I love this particular song um, is the fact that it fits perfectly in my vocal range. <laughs> and very honestly, if there was nobody else in the church, it would be, you know, I would still be blasting away uh, at, on this song because it just is the perfect song for that. Um, but it, I think that's the thing that has changed somewhat is I've, I've been, gotten a new appreciation for just... Uh, not just the great theology and hymns, not just the great, uh, the deep meetings. Some of the hymns are difficult hymns to sing, um, dealing with uh, what what Christ went through, uh, dealing with our own sin and awareness of our own sin. Uh, they're not, you know, I would never classify them as happy <laughs> happy <laughs> hymns, uh, but uh, this is one that that uh, is, is it goes beyond happy. There's a joy because there's a depth to it because it tells you um, it's not just that you can be happy as you go along life's merry way, but there is a reason why you have joy in your life. And that just sort of like, it, and as you sing it, uh, 
as you look at the words, it begins to well up in you. And there's nothing like, and Jesus talks about the, the, the living water welling up within you. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and, and that I think that kind of what is going on whenever I think about or sing this hymn. Well, that brings me to my second question and answers it as well, which is, <laughs> can you share your personal connection <laughs> to Blessed Assurance? And uh, what significance does it hold for you? Well, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty much what you just told me. So, pretty but pretty much, but there's, but the thing is too, it's, it's a, um, I'm a uh, positive person for the most part. Sometimes depending on whom around, I'm disgustingly optimistic about things uh, <laughs> to the point of I have blinders on and I don't see reality. When things are really horrible, I need to see that they're as being they're horrible, and so. Uh, but I, I tend to be very optimistic. And and one of the things about um, this particular song is that as you go through and look at the individual words and, and the phrases that they put in there, it it gives it gives deeper meaning to my optimism, even when things are very difficult in life and so on. There is a reason why. You can be filled with joy, mm. um, and there's a reason why, and that reason is basically because you have this blessed assurance. Yeah. No matter whether or not the difficulties are there because of um, just circumstances the world has placed on you, or someone else has placed on you, or financial situations, so on, or for something particularly that you've brought on yourself by your own sin, by your own weaknesses, and so on. In the middle of that, you still have blessed assurance. Yeah. Yeah. And because it has nothing to do with, with what you do, it has to do with what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will continue to do in your life. Uh one of the things uh and I shared this earlier in the podcast when I told the story of this hymn, mm -hmm. the way she wrote it is actually really interesting because of the fact that you just said that you enjoy the more upbeat hymns and things like that. And she was talking about how hymns uh there's a harmonization, not just musically, but the words to the music. Mm -hmm. And uh, her her friend, Mrs. Joseph F. Knapp, uh, is the one who wrote the actual music mm -hmm. for this. And she played it for her two times on her piano and then asks Fanny, is there, is there anything that comes to mind when you hear this? And boom, here comes Blessed Assurance. So the music was there before the song yes. was written. So she had written this this piece, and she asked, she turns to Fanny Crosby and asks, "Does this like does anything kind of spring up in you? Does does this does this song make you think anything?" And she recalls going, it makes me think, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And I'm going, well, that's one way to write a song. I mean, <laughs> yes. I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, and, and, uh, but it reminds me of, uh, and, and this is something that I talked with mom about. It's something I talked with Aunt Pam about too. In both of those instances, the music is what kind of elevates the hymn and it makes you like, he keeps me singing. It puts you into this happy upbeat. Yes. God's going to keep me going. He's going to like, even in the midst of bad times, God's going to keep moving me forward. And it's got this very uplifting song and this idea of day by day that you listen to the music and the music is this calming, very, mm -hmm. things are going to be okay. The word steadfast comes yeah, to me. That there's exactly. A, there's a steadfastness that you have because he covered he, day by day. Yeah. It yeah, just, every single day, it's just, you don't have to worry. It's a very comforting song and, mm -hmm. and, and the music is very comforting along with it. And this song comes along and, and one of the things that Fanny Crosby said is that, you know, and she knew when a hymn of hers was going to be, it was going to become popular. It was going to be a really just, man, it, it was going to stick into people's heads. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And this was one of those hymns oh, yeah. because the music and the lyrics harmonize together in such mm-hmm. a way that it's just the music of blessed assurance brings along this feeling of assurance. Like I, I can do this, you know, because I have Jesus Christ. And so I am mm-hmm. assured and the music comes along and it assures you as well, you know? Yes. They fit together so perfectly. Yeah. So last time I had you on, we talked about the hymn, Thy Mercy, My God, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit more of a heady type Mm -hmm. song, very much a deeper understanding of what does it mean for God to have a mercy on us? And and we talked about that. And this is, and it it was much more of an obscure hymn too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not a lot of people have ever heard of it, which uh, also goes to show why you're your podcast has not outpaced mom's uh, mom's downloads of the old rugged cross. <laughs> but but um, this, on the other hand, is a completely different uh, song because it, it, it may not be like a super deep intellectual song, but it is a very popular song. And yet it does have a very deep understanding <clears throat> of we can know. Well, it, it reminds me that the poor, uh, not brilliant peasant along the road, like a John Bunyan, could then immerse himself in Scripture and write um, Pilgrim's Progress. Mm. Because it, you, I, I, mean, I read this, and it, is, it has deep theological significance, but easy to understand. Yeah. Significance. I mean, the second, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. I mean, the, anybody reading this who knows how to read is going to be able to understand what is going on in in Fanny Crosby's mind as she is, as she is writing these words down, yeah. and also... If they are believers, they have had those experiences. If nothing else, when they came to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and suddenly the weight of their sin you know, was no longer on them, then the freedom that comes in that, the oh, yeah. exuberance, the ebullience, the just amazing feeling— and you know, I know this is not just always a feeling thing, but the feeling that comes with that is just you know, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Yeah, that's what, that's what happens yeah, yeah. because you're just amazed that you are now a part of this family. You are accepted. You know, in the middle of the yuck, sometimes that is you, <laughs> you <laughs> that you have. Dis- angels descending towards you, bringing from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love into your life. Yeah. And that to me is just, you know, it's one of those things that um, it is powerful the- theologically, very powerful, but at the same time, it's not that difficult to understand. Yeah. yeah. You know, the regular person can grab it. And you're right. I, this is, I know this is perhaps one of the most popular of her songs, mm-hmm. and I can see exactly why it would be. Uh, one of the things also about v- verse two, and we kind of talked about this earlier, mm-hmm. that I absolutely, and I've talked about this. I talked about this when I talked about Fanny Crosby in the very first episode of season one, when we talked about the bright forever and her understanding of what heaven's going to look like and the fact that she's blind. And she says, visions of a rapture now burst on my sight. Mm-hmm. That this perfect submission, perfect delight vision visions of rapture burst on her sight. She was blind. Yes. Like (laughs) how, how does she know? (laughs) Well, and and even in the last verse, the last couple of lines, watching and waiting, looking above. Yeah. I mean, but it, it, it goes back to Jesus says in John at one point, and I don't want to, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a paraphrase here, but he's bringing sight to those 
yeah. who are blind and making blind those who think they see. Yeah. You know, the whole idea there is that is that we are there's a difference between physical and spiritual sight. Mm. And you can have all the you can have 20 20, you can have 20 10, you can have perfect 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 physical sight and be totally blind spiritually True. because you do not see what is really there. You see the external circumstances, you see the things that you want to see, but you don't see the truth behind what is really going on. You don't see the spiritual world that God is in control of and is doing battle on your behalf against Satan and his minions. I mean, you don't see that um, if you don't have the spiritual sight. But they, those things are spiritually discerned. And I think these things here are spiritually discerned. And I, I, I just wish that I had the sight that Fanny Crosby had. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she was physically blind, but, you know, she was watching. She was waiting. She was always looking above mm -hmm. because she was setting her mind on those things that were above, yeah. not on the things of the earth. Yeah. Um, and and she, she has actually said before that if, if God were to come back and to offer her sight— <laughs> that uh and and I think you actually had the quote from it mm -hmm. that that she would be like, no. <laughs> no. I would I, not accept it. Yeah, I, I I would rather continue to be blind. Yeah. What it actually said is I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. I mean, it reminds me, it reminds me of, and we have a, we have a contemporary like that too, Johnny Erickson Tata. I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah. talks about, I don't, I, if, if God, if I go back and God could give me the ability to stand upright and walk and breathe and all the things that I Never. don't have because of my paraplegia or quadriplegia, I, I wouldn't take it because I yeah. would not give anything, anything for the close relationship I have with Jesus Christ. And I mean, yeah. that, that is, you know, for those of us who are um, blessed and privileged to have our bodies functioning in a fairly normal way. <laughs> At 75, <laughs> I'm not sure it's functioning in a fairly normal way any longer, but, but, but to have that, you know, saying, no, I would rather have Jesus than anything. Yeah. I'd rather, oh, wait, that's, wait, that's, that's another hymn. That's another song. That's, that's, that's <laughs> But it's true because, and, and I've, I've actually shared this with this podcast before, and I've also shared it with numerous groups uh, that I've spoken to the same, the same feeling is like, I, I would be so concerned with how I was able to turn a phrase and how good I was at speaking and how I could, you know, jab at somebody or do, you know, yeah. if I had fluency, mm -hmm. but I've stuttered my whole life and I look back and I see this path God was taking me on. And actually what was really interesting, um, pastor Tim at church, uh, was talking about that, um, that we're clay, we're mm -hmm. clay to be molded and, Sometimes, sometimes we would just rather just sit and just be clay, yeah. uh, but God is shaping us into some, something. And I look back and I, I, for a long time, I thought my stuttering was not a gift from God. It was, it was far from it, mm -hmm. but I look back on it now after years and years and years of thinking through it and reading God's word and go, well, wait a minute, this is grace. Mm -hmm. Because if I had been able to speak and speak fluently, one, I don't know if I'd be where I am. I don't know if I'd be the same person I am because I would be, I'd be so concerned about how good I speak and how wonderful I am at this. And, oh man, I, I have such a quick wit and I can do this and I can do this and I can do this and I can, I can pierce somebody, you know, with my words Instead, it's humbled me mm -hmm. tremendously. And not that, not that I can't still, 
be quick witted at times or joke and be sarcastic and things like that. And and sometimes take it too far uh, still, but how many times it has stopped me. My stuttering has stopped me from saying things that I look back and go, man, I'm glad I didn't say that, Mm -hmm. man. I'm glad I, I'm I'm not only that I didn't say it. I'm glad I couldn't say that, (laughs) (laughs) that, that, that would not have been able to even come out Mm -hmm. because of, God's grace. Well, and it's God's grace that, and, and she sees that yeah. and says, man, I, I wouldn't want my sight because I'd be so concerned with me mm-hmm. and I'd be yeah. distracted by me. And that's, that's, that's really good. Well, and I think sometimes also the, the picture there of echoes of mercy and whispers of love and so mm. on, we fail to see that the reason why God does actively does things or allows things into our lives that we don't see as particularly good. Uh, One of those would be, you know, obviously her being blinded when she was six years old. Um, And the whole issue of of, uh, Johnny Erickson Tata having, when she was 17, having the the, uh, spinal injury that she had and you having this disfluency and so on. But you go back to I keep going back to John because that's what I've been studying lately, uh, the Gospel of John. But the Gospels were, and the, the Gospels, the disciples were asking Jesus about the man born blind. Whose fault was it? Was it because of this? Was it because of that? Was it was it his sin or was his parents' sin? And so on. He was born blind. And he goes, neither. It was for the glory of God that mm. the glory of God be yeah. manifested. And the same thing when he would. Why did Jesus wait? two extra days to go to Lazarus. And so that Lazarus is going to be dead four days before Jesus ever gets there. And why, why did he do that? Because God was going to be glorified. And, yeah. and, and so your disfluency, um, I mean, I hear people mention, and I'm sure they've mentioned it to you too a lot, uh, but just, I cannot believe the fact that in carrying on conversation, you struggle with the disfluency. But when you're up there leading worship, when you're on your podcast and so on, you don't have that disfluency, <laughs> and it is a it is a God thing. It yeah. is something which He is protecting you with, and He is using you. Um, and that's one of those echoes of mercy, yeah. one of those whispers of love, and so on. Because I think God, He is not like the man born. You're not like the man born blind, where He just took away the disfluency. Yeah. But see, God, God either deals with, with His grace. He has. And there are probably more ver- more variations of this, but sometimes God does thing to show His sup- the supremacy of His grace, and sometimes He get He does things in order to show the sufficiency of His mm-hmm. grace. Yeah. And with the man born blind, He showed the supremacy. With ladders, He showed the supremacy. He had power over over illnesses. He had power over death itself. Yeah. And yet, in your situation, you still have the disfluency, but. His grace is sufficient yeah. in the middle of, of that. And I think that's a that that picture there of that assurance that we have that that we can depend upon all things, you know, working to the good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And then yeah. well, and, and 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 in uh Second Corinthians chapter twelve, that my my grace is sufficient for you, for my mm-hmm. power is made perfect. In your, your weakness. weakness. Right. That's so right. so boast all the more in your weakness, because when I am weak, yeah. he is strong. Yeah. Get out there so. and show people how, how disfluent you can <laughs> <Yeah>. be. <laughs> oh, I can do <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, you know, in, in that, then seeing how he works in your life as you are worshiping him. It just, I, mm-hmm. one of the things I would loved, and, and I know you you got the idea, I think, uh, and you may have even talked about it more before on the podcast, but uh, from Bob Coffin uh, about, you know, as, as a worship leader, your job is not to be a worship leader, but a lead worshiper. Mm, yeah. And if you go out there and worship with all your heart, other people will want to worship along with you. Yeah. And I think that's, a, I mean, I, I, and I go back to this, to this hymn there, you know, if she, the blind person, sees these things, <laughs> I mean, I want to see them with her. Yeah, I want to walk along with her and experience that same blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Um, and I want this to be my story. Yeah. I, I, I want to go ahead and 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 just 
blast it out that praising my Savior all the day long is really what life is all about. Yeah. And you could look around the world today and you can see the things that, that people look to to give them happiness and to give them satisfaction and so on, or to even be their saviors. I mean, we're coming up on another year now where there's going to be an election. And there are people on both sides of the aisle and right in the middle of the aisle <laughs> uh, who, who really, in some ways, see the possibility of a um of an earthly savior that they'll mm. see a democratic yeah. candidate or a republican candidate or some independent candidate someone out there who has an answer that's going to make their life better uh more acceptable more so on. and she comes back to no 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 this is all because Jesus is mine yeah you know life is worth living because because he lives. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was say, I'm I'm going like, to, are you going back I, into I'm another going into another song? <laughs> Never mind. But no. But it, it, it really is true that, that yeah. life is worth living, uh, and you have this this joy welling up within you mm -hmm. because you have the blessed assurance that Jesus belongs to you and you belong to Him. Yeah. You were held in His hands, and there's no place else you would want to be. Yeah. So we see that you know the great things beyond us that, that God has done in Christ, and therefore give us the ability to be happy, to be joyful, to experience, and to say, no matter what it is that we're facing, uh, God's bigger than that. Yeah. You know, I've, um, there's also a, a, a thing that I learned, and I can't remember if it was, if I learned it when, from taking psychology classes, um, but whatever you focus on, tends to enlarge. Yeah. If you focus on something, it becomes bigger and bigger in your life. And so if you have difficult things that you are focusing on, they get to be huge and totally unable to be overcome. But if you're focusing on, you know, and God seems then because of that to be sort of uh, yeah, small, lose, lose his power in the background because you're so overwhelmed by the difficulty or the uh, disruptions going on in your life. But when you're focusing on God, and this is a beautiful picture there of that, yeah. you know, when you're, you're watching, you're waiting, you know, you're looking above. And when you're focusing on those things, God just gets bigger in your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he doesn't get bigger. He's always huge. He's always yeah, yeah. more powerful but, um, than anything we could possibly think or imagine. But it reminds me of... Uh... I want to say, uh, there's a book I taught to the teachers um, at my school a couple of years ago, and it's something that actually, I think when, when we were at Journey, mm -hmm. um, Pastor Michael used to talk about this, about does the cross loom large? Yes. Yeah. And the, the bigger we see our sin, the greater the cross has to be. And, and how, how does the cross loom in your life? Is mm -hmm. it, is it this tiny little picture of God or is it? This thing where the, the cross is huge because it has to be huge in order to cover my sin and to cover yeah. and with regards to this hymn to to remind me I I do have that assurance because yes. of the cross you know yeah and it's, it's all because of the cross just like we talked you know the the idea of uh, later on sex about goodness filled with his goodness and so on it is nothing of ours you know it's, yeah. it's you know it is something that he gives us, he makes us heirs, he is the one who gives us the blessed assurance. And because we can focus on that, you know, it doesn't even, does it dishearten me at times to see how weak I really am? Yeah, it does. It bothers me. I remember one of my answers to the questions in the Bible study one time was, was uh, uh, do I have any questions of, uh, for Jesus? And I don't have the questions like, why, why me? Why, why is this bad thing happening? Why is the evil? I don't have those. The questions I have are like, is there, you know, is there any chance that someday I might get it together enough <laughs> to where I feel like I'm not just an abject failure of the Christian life? Uh, and in, in one no. sense, no, <laughs> no, no it never not. will be. But at the same time, that does not dishearten me because I know it's not about me. It's yeah. not about how good I do. Uh, yeah. I mean, I want to do things well because I want to please my Savior. I want to please my Heavenly Father. But 
uh, even doing things well, you know, if I do things well, it's because he is somehow doing something in my life to make me, you know, give up my momentary, absolute, total dependence on and attraction of my earthly self and focus on him more. Yeah. You know, and well, so, and it's kind of like what I talked about in From the Depths of Woe. All the good I can muster up in my life is still filthy rags. Right. It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's not about how good I can be. Mm -hmm. And if it is, then I, then I am. I am an abject failure. Yeah. And I well, always will be. And, and you can't have, if that's, if that's your plumb line is how well you're doing, I don't see how someone can have blessed assurance. Yeah. How, how can you have assurance yeah. if it depends on you knowing what you're like? I mean, yeah. I, I know what I'm like. And so I, you know, I, and I, and I love that Jesus is mine because Jesus also says in John that uh, I am in the Father and he in me, and I am in uh, you, you are in me, and I am in you. And so it's like, yes, yeah. Jesus is yeah. mine, but we're also his. And that's the yeah. most important thing that we are his, we're in his hands, we cannot be lost. We always have that blessed yeah. assurance. Well, um, thank you for being on the podcast again. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it is almost guaranteed this will have more downloads than thy mercy, my God. <laughs> uh, I have found that when I do the obscure hymns, when, when I do hymns that people haven't heard of before, they tend not to want to listen to that podcast. Mm -hmm. What, which I, the only challenge I would give to any of you out there who are listening to this right now, go and listen to the obscure hymns. I find them to be so deep and just absolutely some, some of the most absolutely beautiful hymns uh, are the ones that we don't really hear a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like from the, from the depths of woe is an amazing hymn during Advent. I had a bunch of people go, I've never heard the song. Let all mortal flesh keep silence for many people. I, I had a lot of people like say, I've never heard that song before. And at the same time, they're like, it's, it's beautiful. It's a great song. Yes, it is. Uh, Thy Mercy, My God is a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Go to Dark Gethsemane was another one of those obscure type of songs that m you may have heard it once in your lifetime kind of mm -hmm. songs, if if that. Um, but some of the most obscure songs are are some of the most beautiful, but they don't get a lot of downloads no, <laughs> when no. I do, when I do that. But this one, I have, a, I have a feeling this one's going to get a whole lot more just because of the fact that it's blessed assurance. Yes. It's a song that everyone's heard of. So, uh, so you may be able to surpass mom. Not a your, chance. In <laughs> Not a chance. I, I, I married up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, uh, again, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for sharing your insights into this hymn. Um, it's an amazing hymn and it's a great choice. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.
That was Blessed Assurance, performed by Nathan Drake of Reawaken Hymns from the album Hymns of the Sun. For more information about this song and all of the amazing resources available at Reawaken Hymns, check out the links in the show notes for this episode. As always, thank you for joining us this week on The Bright Forever. Remember to follow us, review us, and of course, subscribe and check out all of the features on our website at thebrightforever.com. We always want to hear from you. There are multiple ways that you can do just that. You can email us at podcast at thebrightforever.com. You can also click the contact us tab at the top of our website and send us a message through our contact form. Or you can go to our website and click the radio microphone in the bottom right corner and record a message up to two minutes and let us know what you think of the podcast. I know some of you out there are thinking, man, I wish I had a t-shirt that I could wear that said The Bright Forever. And that would draw people to me to ask, what is this amazing thing called The Bright Forever? So that you would have the opportunity to share what it is with everyone you come in contact with. Well, guess what? You can. Because we have a merch store on our website. Simply click on the store tab and it will take you to our merchandise store where you can buy t-shirts, there's playing cards, there's stickers and magnets. There's all sorts of things that you can check out. Some designed by my daughters and myself that help you show off the fact that you listen to the bright forever, those conversation starters so that you can spread the word about this amazing podcast and how awesome and wonderful you think it is. Don't forget five star reviews are always accepted. (laughs) Lastly, your financial support means more to me than you could possibly understand. We want to reach more people with this podcast. And the only way to do that is through your support. If you would like to help us reach that greater audience with these amazing hymns, you can go to thebrightforever.com and click the support the podcast tab in the menu. If you're listening on Apple podcast or good pods or pod chaser or a multitude of podcast platforms that you can find us on. You can also find the link to support the podcast or support the show in the show notes for each episode. You can subscribe by giving three, five, eight, or $10 per month to help support what we're doing here at The Bright Forever. And if you're not ready to commit to every month, you can always click the yellow coffee icon at the bottom left of our page and give a $5 or greater one-time gift through our buymeacoffee.com supporters account. Thank you again for listening to our podcast. And I hope you all have an amazing week. Before we go, let me close us in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we have assurance, that God, we have hope and it is secure in you. Father, thank you so much for hymns like Blessed Assurance. That God, we can know and we can have a peace and we can be secure in the fact 
that we are saved. That through the work your son Jesus has done on the cross, we have that blessed assurance. God, the confidence of this song that this is my story. This is my song. And I will praise you all the day long. No matter what happens in our life, no matter the circumstance, we stand secure in you and in what you have done for us. God, we thank you for that. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you are a God who saves. It is in your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. And 494. And may you all experience six farther on. We're out. Mm-hmm.